Hello, it's May, and May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, if you didn't know, and in honor of that, I am here to talk all things SPF and sun protection. I am an SPF enthusiast. I'm very much of camp. You should wear SPF every day if you are able and have access, and you should be reapplying when you can for a variety of reasons. Just, just to name a couple. One, SPF is our first line defense against unnecessary UV damage, and by extension, our first line defense against skin cancer caused by UV damage. And my second reason for being such an SPF enthusiast is that I really do believe that it is one of the only ways that you can ensure that the products that you use on your face outside of SPF, serums, lotions, whatever, treatments, masks, any of that. It is the only way to ensure that they're working as effectively as they can because there are ingredients that degrade in the sun in their containers as well as on your skin. So I'm going to talk about SPF. There are three kind of subtypes of SPF, mineral sunscreens or physical sunscreens, chemical sunscreens, and then hybrids, which contain both mineral filters and chemical filters. Now, which one you choose is going to be entirely based on you and your preferences. I definitely recommend talking to an esthetician or a dermatologist about deciding which type is best for you and your skin type. Google also has helpful resources, I'm sure. I personally will use any of them. I do not find that I'm sensitive to any one type. I find that my skin works well with most of them. Now sunscreen application. How do you know if you're using enough? So for your face and neck and ears, don't neglect the ears, you should be using between a quarter and a half teaspoon. Now to measure that out without using an actual measuring spoon, I use the three finger method. I have no idea who came up with this method. I've seen it floating around the internet and it's just what I have adopted as my way of doing my sunscreen daily. So what that means is you put three lines of sunscreen on your fingers, one, two, three, and that's enough for your face, your ears, and your neck, and roughly is between a quarter and a half teaspoon. Now for your body, my recommendation is honestly just to apply as generously as you can. I've seen people say that you need two fingers for each body part, but that makes no sense to me. If you need three fingers for just your face and your neck, I feel like my arm definitely has more surface area than my face and my neck. So I just apply as generously as possible to ensure that I'm protecting myself as much as I can. Now to make sure that you're adequately protecting yourself, not only should you be applying that liberally to begin with, but you also need to make sure that you are reapplying. Reapplication should occur every few hours. If you're worried about reapplying over your makeup, there are so many options for that these days, ranging from SPF setting powders to SPF setting mists. There's just no reason to avoid that thinking that you'll disrupt your makeup because there are so many options that accommodate that anymore. But yeah, the only way to ensure that you are adequately protecting yourself is to generously apply to begin with and then liberally and frequently reapply following. And like I said, this is hugely important when you are actively exposing yourself to the sun. So when you're on vacation at the beach, in your yard, etc. Now let's talk about some sunscreen options. So I'm gonna highlight some from skinstore.com because I have a discount code with them and I actually love these products. So if you're interested in trying them out based on my recommendation, I have a way for you to save some money. So my two favorite SPF brands from skinstore.com are Color Science and Elta MD. I'm gonna talk about Color Science first because it's one of my top sunscreen brands, just period. And these two are my absolute favorites from them. So the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield in the Glow Shade and the Color Science Total I 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy. So this is an all over facial sunscreen. It comes in, I think, three different tints, a pearlish tint, I think, like a pinkish pearlish tint, the glow version, which is like a golden kind of luminous tint, and then it has a bronze version. I like the glow version because honestly, glowy dewy skin is what I'm striving for always. I love this SPF. It is so lightweight, so beautiful, so easy to apply, doesn't irritate take my skin. It's SPF 50. It's just incredible. And this is not an all over face SPF. This is a three in one eye treatment. It's supposed to serve as a concealer and eye cream as well as your eye area SPF. And it is absolutely incredible. I've gone through like three or four of these. So this is tinted. I think it comes in four different shades. I am the shade fair. This works beautifully on me with makeup, without makeup. It's just, it's just so good. I can't even... 
I can't even tell you. Another product from Color Science that I love is this body SPF. This is the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Body Shield SPF 50. This reminds me a lot of the face shield, only untinted completely. This has no tint at all. It's really easy to blend into the skin, so it's easy to reapply. It's not greasy. It's a formula that I really appreciate and that works really well for me. Now these from Color Science are newer to me, but I'm so excited about them. They are the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Color Balms in the shades Berry, Bronze, and Blush. These are actually really pigmented and you can use them on your cheeks, on your lips, and they have SPF 50. So if you're using these over top of makeup, this is just another little added layer of protection. And not only is it that, but they're really pretty and they're just super fun. I love when brands go the extra mile to make sun care more fun. And I feel like Color Science does do that with their pretty fun whimsical packaging and their formulas like these, as well as like their glow formula, which is really fun and illuminating. Now for Elta MD, I have a specific discount code for skin store that is exclusive to Elta MD. So I will list that down here. And these are my two favorite Elta MD SPFs. So this first one is UV Restore Broad Spectrum SPF 40. This is a completely mineral sunscreen. It has this cute little pump, really easy to dispense, and it works really well for me. This does not irritate my skin at all. It blends in pretty easily. Once it's absorbed, it doesn't have a cast on me. But this one is like my standout personally. This is the Elta MD UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46. So this is specifically great for skin that has like sensitivity issues. It says specifically on here, skin types prone to acne, rosacea, and hyperpigmentation, and that it calms and protects skin. So this is a hybrid formula. This has both mineral filters and a chemical filter in it, and it is completely invisible on me. And it blends into the skin like absolutely nothing. It's very lightweight, it's not super matte, it's really just a great formula, but I love both of these. So here is the skinstore.com discount code as well as the exclusive to Elta MD discount code. I will link all these products down below. Feel free to have a look-see. I hope you find something that you like. And if you have any questions about these products any further, let me know down below. Okay, so outside of liberal and frequent application of SPF, what else can you do to protect yourself? My first answer is hats. So these little roll-up visors, I have two of them. Actually, I think I have three of them but these are super convenient to carry in like a beach bag or on vacation. I always bring these with me when I travel to somewhere where I'm gonna be outside a lot. And I always bring these with me when I'm going to like the pool at my parents' house. Don't get too comfortable. Don't think that just because you're wearing a hat that the sun can't touch you because that's just simply not true. I've read that wearing a hat increases your SPF by something like 10. So it is definitely a tool that can help increase your sun protection factor that you have going on, but it is not something that gives you complete protection from the sun, right? Second, sunglasses, specifically bigger sunglasses. So sunglasses are intended to block 100% of UV from entering into your sphere, right? So as such, these protect that area around your eyes, which is why sometimes you'll see people emerge from the beach, they've fallen asleep in their chair, and they have a horrible sunglasses tan. It's because this protects that area of your face. So not only are you helping prevent skin cancer in that area, but you're also helping prevent unnecessary signs of age, like wrinkles. Sunglasses are absolutely key. SPF, floppy hat, sunglasses, you've got as much protection as you basically can. Another suggestion that I have that I actually utilize whenever I go on vacation is an umbrella, specifically a black umbrella. So if you're out and about on a really sunny day, walking underneath an umbrella can really help prevent the exposure that you experience. This is a habit that I adopted several years ago on some trip to Disney World where you walk 87,000 miles, mostly in the direct sunlight, and it not only helps with preventing any type of sunburn, but it also helps with, you know, keeping yourself kind of in the shade, giving yourself a little break from how hot it is. So those are really my tips, frequent and liberal application of SPF, relying on things like hats and sunglasses and umbrellas to kind of shield you. Another option, but something that I've never experienced, which is why I didn't mention it because I can't really explain it to you, is UV protective clothing. That is definitely a big industry anymore and I've seen it bopping around all over the place and it's something that I'm really interested in but I've never experienced. So that's something to look into if you're interested. The sun is incredibly important to us as a species. We need the sun, we do. I'm not here saying that the sun is evil. I'm not demonizing the sun, 
but I am demonizing skin cancer. Skin cancer is largely preventable. I have so much family history of skin cancer that I feel like I am more susceptible just based on that. So I'm doing everything that I possibly can to protect myself as much as I possibly can. And it is my hope that you will too. I know that the, the SPF journey is not always the easiest, especially for people like me who have really sensitive skin or issues like rosacea and acne, which I also have, but I'm here to tell you that it is possible to find SPFs that work well for you. And I am hopeful that if you haven't yet, you will embark on the journey to find your perfect sunscreen. Thank you so much for watching. It is May, which means that summer is right around the corner for those of us in the US. It is starting to get a little bit warmer here in the Midwest where I live, and I'm really excited about it. So I'm excited to start spending days in the sun with my SPF and my hats, of course, but I hope that you're looking forward to summer as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.